Hey guys, Left Red Out here, and today I wanted to go over Prismatic Hunter's melee potential and how to best exploit it in a loadout. The key abilities to this are Combination Blow and Gambler's Dodge. Punch, Dodge, Punch is what makes a melee based Arc Hunter so powerful. However, Prismatic Hunter's aspects and fragments make it a much better host for the combination. I was able to easily deal over 100,000 damage per punch with this loadout, and with proper planning and debuffs, I was easily able to get over 200,000 damage. I'll be explaining the intricacies of this loadout, but if you want to just copy it and test it out for yourself, for your abilities, use Silence and Squall, Gambler's Dodge, Combination Blow, and Grapple. Your aspect should consist of Stylish Executioner and Winter Shroud. This gives us a total of 5 Fragment slots, which we will be able to slot in Facet of Courage, Facet of Dawn, Facet of Protection, Facet of Blessing, and Facet of Purpose. Our exotics will consist of Tractor Cannon and Liar's Handshake. Make sure to equip a 1-2 Punch Shotgun as well. And I'm not going to go through every armor mod but here they are on the left so feel free to pause and copy them into your loadout the same goes for artifact mods but this only applies for the season this video released in so don't worry about this if it's not season of echoes when you're viewing this video with that said let's take a look at our main damage engine on kill combination blow gives us a stack of combination blow and refunds our class ability this makes gamblers dodge a natural choice allowing us to refund our melee energy when dodging near enemies and allowing us to continue to gain stacks a combination blow. This buff can be stacked up to three times and will give us a four times multiplier on our melee damage at maximum stacks. It is also worth noting that our melee energy will not be consumed unless you kill an opponent with it. While we are talking about our abilities, let's go over the rest of them. Silence and Squall lets us gain frost armor from fast to purpose and it acts as both a damage and add clear super. It will also give us invisibility whenever it kills an enemy thanks to stylist execution. Grapple may seem like an odd choice but it is a prime pick for starting our damage engine. It lets us get nice and close to an enemy while debuffing it on hit. We can then use grapple's melee to gain invisibility and make our job much easier. Now let's take a look at one of our most dodge centric aspects. Winter Shroud allows us to slow enemies when we dodge near them. And of course, since our melee dodge loop heavily involves dodging near our enemies, this aspect is able to fully shine. It's hard not to slow down enemies with Winter Shroud, and you can easily freeze enemies by dodging near them twice. This also allows us to buff our melee damage by meleeing frozen enemies. Additionally, since we are constantly slowing and freezing enemies, we gain easy access to darkness debuffed enemies. These enemies become easy activations for our second aspect, Stylus Executioner. Killing any enemy with an elemental debuff allows us to go invisible. Additionally, if we attack an enemy while invisible, it will inflict a void weakness debuff and give us a 200% increase in our melee damage. This combined with our melee buff easily allows us to change style executioner with itself by punching the nearest enemy while invisible and this will give them an elemental debuff even if you kill them. Stylish Executioner also gives us True Sight while we are invisible. This doesn't benefit us too much, but is a nice convenience to track down enemies and activities with radar disabled. These aspects give us access to 5 fragments. Facet of Courage, Facet of Dawn, Facet of Protection, Facet of Blessing, and Facet of Purpose. Facet of Courage gives us a 10% damage buff to our combination blow to, to any enemy that is slowed by our dodge. Make sure to be dodging before you punch to get most out of this aspect. But you'll be dodging so much that it doesn't really matter. Facet of Dawn makes us radiant any time we hit an enemy with our charged melee attack. Since we are constantly punching, we are constantly radiant. Since we are constantly radiant, we constantly have a 25% damage buff for our weapons, as well as anti-barrier rounds. This is really convenient against both barrier champions and enemies that spawn temporary immunity shields. Facet of Protection reduces any incoming damage we take while near three enemies by 15%. This is further increased to 32% while transcendent. We are constantly surrounded by enemies in melee range and therefore constantly have a 15% damage reduction. Facet of Blessing starts our health regeneration on melee kill. If we are transcendent, our teammates start health regeneration as well. This is a no-brainer and means we are always regenerating health as we kill enemies. Facet of Purpose gives us two stacks of frost armor per orb of power and stacks up to five times. Frost armor is a 4.5% damage reduction buff that lasts for 10 seconds. At five stacks, we will receive a 22.5% damage reduction. For our weapons, we will be using any special weapon, a 1-2 punch shotgun, and tractor cannon. 
The special weapon can be whatever you like. The melee is our biggest killer in this loadout, and you'll generate a lot of orbs of power, so you can easily get ammo to support two special weapons. I personally like to use the call. It's a strand rocket sidearm that you can get lead from gold and one for all on. Lead from gold gives us some ammo for the weapon on heavy brick pickup, and one for all gives the gun a 35% damage increase for simply hitting three enemies. The one-two punch shotgun can be any shotgun with the trait. However, there is a specific shotgun that combos very well with tractor cannon. Retold tells the void shotgun from the Dreaming City. We will specifically want one of lead from gold and one-two punch. Lead from gold for the ammo economy and one-two punch to boost our melee damage. One-two punch will double most of our melee attack damage when we land all shotgun pellets. For our heavy slot, use tractor cannon. This makes enemies receive 30% more damage and suppresses them. It's also worth noting that suppressing enemies also blinds them, making this a good way to temporarily stun certain combatants. For our exotic armor, we will be using Liar's Handshake. Liar's Handshake gives us the cross counter buff, which triples our melee damage and lets us regain health from kill. This buff is given whenever we receive melee damage or on an arc charged melee attack. This buff is consumed on the melee after you receive it. Relativism is also another noteworthy contender for the slowdown, as it can roll Spirit of the Liar in the second column. This does exclude the healing factor of Liar's Handshake but the damage is what we want from the exotic. As for the first column, there are two notable combinations. First being Spirit of Caliban. This will make any of our melee final blows trigger an ignition. The second is Spirit of the Dragon, which will reload all of our weapons and increase their handling when you dodge. For the rest of your armor, aim for as high resilience as possible, then focus on recovery and discipline. Discipline may sound odd for a melee focus loadout, but you will always either have your dodge to gain a charge for your melee, or your charge to melee itself. For your helmet, you will want to run two dynamos and a hands-on. Two dynamos will give us 4% of our super per dodge. All hands-on will give you a minimum of 1% super energy per charge melee final blow, and will scale higher depending on the rank of the enemy killed. This generates your super extremely quickly. For your arms, you will want to use two copies of Heavy Handed and an Impact Induction. Heavy Handed will spawn an orb of power on charged melee final blows on a 5 second cooldown. These orbs will generate 1.1% as to your super, and as for Impact Induction, on charged melee hits you will gain 12% of your grenade. On the chest piece, use a concussive dampener, a melee damage resistance, and an elemental resistance for the activity you are currently playing. Since you aren't necessarily using your weapons for direct damage, you can skip out on the surge mods for the most part. Run a void scavenger for tractor cannon and either scavengers or weapon surges matching your other weapons. Finally, for your class item, use a time dilation to increase the amount of time you have with your weapon surges. Powerful attraction so that you don't miss out on any orbs you generate, and a special finisher to ensure you never run out of special ammo. If you aren't using any weapon surges, go ahead and use a bomber mod to generate your grenade quicker. If you are watching this video during Season of Echoes, here are the artifact mods you will want to equip as well. Void Hegeonomy will grant you a partial void over shield on final blows against weakened targets. Radiant Orbs will grant you radiance on orbit power pickup. Galvanic Armor grants more damage resistance while you're amplified. Shield Crush grants increased melee damage when you have frost armor or a void over shield as well as increased grenade damage when amplified or radiant. Finally, Transference will give you increased melee damage by 10% while transcendent. As far as the gameplay loop of this class goes, start off the fight with a grapple and melee into a trash mob. This will turn you invisible. From there, melee and dodge to build up stacks of combination blows so you can begin buff stacking. I did this testing over in the Lost Sector in the Cistern on Nessus against the boss. For a baseline, our melee does just over 8600 damage. At 3 stacks combination blow, we get a 300% increase for 35,000. Fast to Courage gives us a further 10% increase on any slowed or frozen targets and brings our damage to about 39,000. Flyer's Handshake increases every other melee attack's damage by 300% through cross counter to about 117,000 damage. One two punch works a bit differently on cross counter attacks, only buffing our damage by a 40% buff to about 164,000 damage. Combine this with tractor cannon for another 30% increase to 213,000 damage. If you happen to have transcendence activated, you will gain a further 10% increase of melee damage to about 235,000. Now that's pretty much a loadout. Have fun with your roly poly jitsu and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video. If you want to see more Destiny 2 content, check out the description below for a link to my Destiny 2 playlist.